This episode may contain strong language and adult themes. Viewer and listener discretion is advised. Guten Morgen, guten Nachmittag, guten Abend. Willkommen in Oktoberfest, Ausstiegen 22. Uh, so yes, uh, good evening, welcome to the uh, Ausstiegen 22. The 22 dropouts, it is our Oktoberfest. I've got my Bavarian finest suit on and Bavarian tie. Uh, and jo joining us tonight all the way from Malta, and all he's managed to do is get a pint of beer, uh, German beer, and I've got a, a couple of litres uh, I'm getting an armic holding that as well. We've got Sam. Say hello, Sam. Hello, Sam. Hello, Sam. And um, uh, now, a couple of weeks ago, we had somebody else uh, uh, on who's gone for the, the Oktoberfest theme tonight, and that's Julian. How are you doing, Julian? I'm doing very well. Put the old uh, Oktoberfest leader hosen on, just because you told me to. <laughs> Too right. Um, at least I'm glad to see that our, uh, our guys uh, who are joining us are making the effort, and sadly... Sam isn't, but there you go. No. Uh, now, um, since you were on last, um, uh, Julian, there's been a little bit of controversy uh, because you, uh, yeah. Now, you decided to uh, let some things out of the bag, didn't you, so to speak, about when you've been on tour with, uh, with Sam and with other people. Just remind us of that, will you? Well, I kind of um, didn't let much out of the bag. I just told really? a lot of tame, tame, tame stories, that's all. Really? Did did you not name names? I, I might have named one name. And that's where the controversy seems to have come from. Uh -huh. Because, ah, yeah, you see, one goes on tour, stays on tour, allegedly. Now, we know that that's not true of the 22 dropouts. But <laughs> it did, it did cause some consternation uh, amongst, amongst some of our viewership. Uh, in fact, amongst the person that you <laughs> named, I think it's only right he comes and challenges you. So, everybody, give a 22 welcome Absolutely. to Pete. Okay, apparently uh, Julian has called me out after uh, a tour antic that I've uh, I've discovered, uh, which works really, really well. Basically, I can call people up by using the hotel system at half past six in the morning in random rooms, mostly the referees' rooms, but occasionally I get mostly. it wrong. Mostly. <laughs> yeah. Now, I know that the, the other clubs re and the other people really don't take too kindly to you doing um, early morning calls, but I'm intrigued. Do the referees take it in the right spirit as well? Well, okay. So, uh, can I call, can I say about uh, Mr. Crouch? Uh, so, Mr. Crouch was sleeping very, very merrily. Me and Julian were at the bar. And I stayed behind a little bit and asked for early morning phone calls for three rooms. For Julian's room, for Mike's room and for Pete's room. <laughs> and I said, if they do not answer, please, will you go and knock on their door? Well, Crouchy knew about this, so he unplugged his phone. And then he was interrupted at <laughs> 6.30 in the morning by this... Uh, Polish cleaner saying, Mr. Crouch, Mr. Crouch, we need to see if you get up. <laughs> Where he just told her to uh, leave the room at the sharpest exit. The thing about Julian's room is I got Julian's number wrong and it ended up. So we went to the game. I forgot all about what I did. Uh, Mike came down, thought it was funny. Crouchy came down full of hell. Sam was my roomie, so he was just snoring his box off as usual. Um, and, <laughs> now that's something, yeah, I can testify to that. All right. Um, yeah, but he, it just, he goes to bed early and sleeps naked on top of his bed as well, which is just, just <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's just so wrong in so many ways. Um, and I, I do have pictures, but they can't be on here now. Um, no. Oh yeah, they can. No. Oh yeah, they can. No, they can't. No, they can't. <laughs> they no, they cannot. can't. <laughs> Um, yeah, and uh, so I went to the ground and we were there just like chatting away, just having a bit of a laugh, just getting our matches ready. And uh, this, this Scots bloke at the table beside me was blaming all his teammates about this call he got. And I was like, well, what have I done? You know, like, and we were like listening. I was like, excuse me, were you in 515? And he went, yeah. I said, shit, I thought that was your room, Julian. And he was like, you didn't know not to it yourself, did you? 
No, 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 no. But Julian, oh, this was just between you and Julian. Yeah, yeah, but it was all right. So I, but he was having a go at all his teammates for calling an half past six call, and then it was me. <laughs> and um, how did he find out it was you? Julian's not much of a snitch on tour. Uh, so he told somebody else who quickly ran and told somebody else, and then <laughs> it found out that one of the referees, one of the referees, so they didn't find out which one. Okay, so which team was it? Was it the Aberdeen? Belfast. Belfast. Uh, Belfast. Belfast. Was it Belfast? Bel- yeah. Belfast old schoolboys or something, wasn't it? Yeah, but yeah. Belfast so, old uh, boys or something. I thought you uh, so, Julian, um, yeah. would you like to introduce the club? And then, Pete, um, I think you owe the club and <laughs> the club member a, a public apology live on the magic of television. I said, Julian's, <laughs> Julian's so excited by that, he's turned his video off. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly, yes. Maybe he's getting changed again. <laughs> no, he um, must stop my video. He was stopped by the host. Oh, that's ace. Uh, <laughs> 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 um, uh, do you know what? I don't know what I've done and I don't know how to get it back. Um, that's the best picture you? of him. I do believe I, I do believe the team was Belfast, either old old boys or Belfast High School old boys. Yeah, Belfast High School. Playing the Warsaw Rugby Festival in yeah. 2019. So 19. then, Pete, I think it's time that you made your public apology to the club and also to the individual involved. No. No, I'm joking. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> and that's fine. Yeah. Actually, that's much better. It's much more fun. Um, we will be posting your address on the on the bottom of the, the screen. That's to anybody totally from right. Belfast who wants to go over there oh, and uh, take like it up with people Pete. People turning up there. So, Pete, um, welcome welcome to the show, mate. Uh, first time on for you. Uh, how's, um, how's the lockdown been treating you? I've had a great time in lockdown. Uh... I went, I was doing volunteer work in Sainsbury's and shopping for elderly people. So I kept busy. So, yeah, it's all, all been good. Apart from no rugby. Uh, yeah, yeah. It seems strange to just finish. I missed out on Flanders. I missed out on Poland. Yeah. Um, and then, but it is what it is. It affects everybody, doesn't it? Yeah, absolutely. So where else were you going to go over to this, uh, uh, this year, apart from Flanders and, and Warsaw? No, that was it. W- work probably dictates more than anything at the moment. So, uh, so that was that was my my refereeing abilities pushed to the max with them two tournaments, and I can't show up Julian too much. So, <laughs> well, you you did but, it in Vegas. Remember this? Yeah, oh. but she was pointing, but she was pointing that at you because you asked no, her the question. No, definitely asked for you, mate, because you're the one who asked the question. <laughs> no, you asked Peter, the question saying that. Uh, Peter, so when he went maybe, to Vegas, we all went out to the pool at the hotel and uh, Pete goes up and he wanted to see how cold the water was before he went in. And he asked this uh, young lifeguard who's sitting up on the top, how cold is it? She took one look she, at him and went, that cold. She was fit. <laughs> she was really fit as well. And I was like, oh, my God. So, yeah. So, yeah, no, that was a, that was our uh, thingy. But, um, yeah, Sam, Sam's quite a, quite a, tall, a tall person, aren't you, to Sam? Yeah, you, go okay. to bed, you go to bed at 10 o'clock, you know, you, you don't stay up too much. And then when in Poland, we were, um, what we were doing, we said, right, we'll all go out in the town, we'll all go out in the town, let's all go out in the town. You went to bed, me and Julian ran upstairs, we got showered, we got changed, we came downstairs, and I found Julian asleep on the bar. So that never even happened. <laughs> but you know what, just talking about being tired, uh, Sam's sitting there yawning his head off. No, no, that wasn't it, yawn, that was me going up. Are you fucking serious? <laughs> oh, yeah, he is, mate. Yeah, he is. I know you're I, a shit tourist as well. Oh, man. No, just, yeah. Yeah, guilty as charged, I suppose, yeah. Guilty well, Pete, where, where were you with your... That's ref- response for you, isn't it, Sam? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I'll just accept what you tell me and drink it. <laughs> uh, so, Pete, where's your rugby taking you up to, uh, up to lockdown? What were you working on? Where were you at? Oh no! I, I stopped. Uh, I stopped refereeing and touch judging in 2017, 18, maybe. Uh, and I was just just playing in Middlesbrough, just playing for Acklam. So just third team, turn up at ten past two, kick off quarter past two, finish at four o'clock, bar, and then home. That's the best way of rugby. <laughs> <laughs> no warm up, no nothing. Just walk straight on the pitch. What position we're playing? And get thrown the top, and away you go. 
a bit like my referee, actually, isn't it? No That's warm up, no, no anything else. As Sam will, you don't, you yeah, you actually don't do a warm up, do you? I don't do a warm up. No, no, no warm ups um, are boring. No, I didn't well, do a not only are they boring, training. but by the time I finish one, I'm bloody knackered. <laughs> I mean, you've only got that. to look. It is, a, it is a bit of age. But you've only got to look at the way that some of these players come off the pitch after their warm up, and they are already dying on the feet. The sweat pouring off them. They're not just warm; they're volcanic. It, it, I can't that, understand why sweat. you that's do that. Like yeah, but Mike, that's when you referee third team rugby. They don't even warm up. You know, you just that's yeah. I wish I'd do that a bit more often. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, I'm I'm all for that. I, I do a little bit of a stretch, and then the warm up is sprint to the fir- to the kickoff. Uh, I'm lucky like that, I suppose. Was it Spreaders used to just touch his toes and walk on the pitch, didn't he? I think he still does, doesn't he? <laughs> oh, who's getting bumped by their dog? That's I my dog. A guy called, um, off. I still remember a guy called Lee who used to come over and referee us over in Sweden, and he'd come on. I said, Lee, you're going to warm up, and he had one lunge, just one. Not two, one. Before he's got a big belly out there. One lunge, right, I'm done, let's go on, let's go like that. And off he went. Can't fault him. I really can't fault him. Uh, so I um, think we should talk about some other rugby. And we'll get on to, when, when we've won these two up, ladies and gentlemen, we'll get on to more stories when, when Pete and, and Julian have finished a few more beers. Uh, but there is that one big story at the moment, isn't there, in rugby? Uh, and that's uh, what happened at the weekend. And I'm not talking about the Exeter Chiefs versus Wasps game, uh, but the cancelled England versus Barbars. Uh, gents, where are we sitting on this? I'm it's surprised not that Farrell wasn't involved, so Sam could have a go. Eh. Uh, <laughs> aye, well, basically they went out for dinner, didn't they? And, uh, well, let's just call it exactly what it is. They didn't go for dinner, they went for a fucking piss-up. Glorified fucking dinner, my ass. Yeah, yeah no, just, they, went on the, they went on the last, didn't they? Well, to be fair, I, I, I want to just throw a few things out here. First of all, it's not like it's one or two young lads on the team that have decided to sneak out. How would you sneak 12 people out? And how would you sneak them out twice in a week as well? Um, and if you're going out for dinner and beers, you can do that in one of the team rooms or whatever in the hotel or the restaurant in the hotel. I don't know what was going on, but I, I honestly can't believe, I, I mean, it's, it's either the most monumentally stupid thing ever to happen uh, to a rugby team and a bunch of blokes, or they said, um, well, actually, if we went to this pub uh, and we've got a private room, um, that's just the same as a stay near. They've either done it like that or they've just gone to one of the, the, the staff in the team. Listen, if we go and have a, a private dinner in the private room in the private bar, that's all right, isn't it? And maybe somebody's yeah. given them, yeah, that should be okay, but nobody's gone to check any further. But after it happened once and they got found out, then to do it again is um, it's quite bizarre. All, all, all I'm going to say is that where was my invite? <laughs> <laughs> so, they were waiting for you to phone up in the morning mate that's what it was yeah 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 no um now my my, my thing about it all is that they uh they're not exactly disappointing a load of paying fans are they you know they're just going out on the lash doing this they've they've made a mistake but, but they still cost the rfu one million pounds not yeah, just that, but but I think just... of the guys who've got to work, you know, I know there's no crowds or anything, but you've got TV companies. A lot of those are subcontracted. They're um, self-employed. So none of those guys are going to get paid. You've got the pundits, you've got the TV commentators, you've got everybody else involved, from electricians down to sound engineers. They're not going to get paid for that day now. And it no. goes a lot further than you realise. Oh, yeah, I know. I'm, I'm, I am teasing. I do, I do understand, but it's more to the fact. It's just like, we've done it, haven't we? We've done it. Yeah, we can't take it back, can we? But no, uh, yeah, no. I mean, you, you look at, you, you know what it's like with some of the sponsors. They have adverts, you know, um, done just particularly for, for those sort of games that get broadcast. They've, they maybe spent a million pounds having an advert made. Where's that money gone now? What, what return have they got for, for making that advert? So I think the ramifications could go on and on for this. I, I think it's uh, not only is it incredibly disappointing, but um, it's, it's very, very damaging as well. My first reaction was, what the bloody hell have you idiots done now? You bunch of morons. You cost me my Sunday afternoon. Yeah. Well, <laughs> turning the internet off for the kids. I was going to turn the internet off for the kids, get a bit of peace and quiet, chuck them out to go and play Pokemon Go and watch the Barbars game. And now I can't even bloody do that. I'm going to get dragged out now. I haven't even got rugby as an excuse to not go out and do Pokemon bloody Go with my nine-year-old. <laughs> now I've got to go so- walking in the rain if it's pissing down. 
such a father figure, aren't you, Julian? Just kick him outside. I know. Yeah, <laughs> kick, kick him outside. The, the kids are fear. Oh, come on. Follow that. But, back. I think your Facebook post summed it quite up. It said, what about bloody going to do on a Sunday now? <laughs> yeah. So, no, it did. It, it did. I mean, like, you just imagine all these rugby clubs that done all their social the distancing, you know, to get people in. You know, rugby clubs at the moment are struggling left, right and centre all over the country. And it's it's all these ones that are grassroots that rely on the, the bar take and all this lot. Just because they've still got to pay all their insurance. They've still got to pay, you know, the RFU are only going to help them out so much. And if it's cost them a million quid, they'll just cut back it from somewhere else. You're making the, a bad situation worse, aren't you? Uh, I think uh, I think that's really where where we should leave it uh, for now. That, uh, the only reason I want to leave it for now is because it's time to take a break. Um, we'll see you right after this. When you need clear and concise match official communication systems, look no further than the brand new Axiwe AT350. Radios are always that they're always useful. They always help us, especially the Axiwe where all three of us can be open at any time, we can have open communication. Available now from refcomsglobal.net. Invest in profits into match official development worldwide. Uh, well, welcome back to part two of tonight's Oktoberfest. Uh, you can see I have got changed because it's damn hot. In, uh, in that get up, uh, which is nice with you when you're with a lady, uh, but it ain't no good if you're in the jungle. So um, anyway, we'll keep up the Oktoberfest tradition. Cheers, boys. Frost. Cheers. Cheers. Frost. Frost. Um, now, in the break, these gentlemen were talking all sorts of tour stories, none of which we can repeat, um, even on our, our X-rated show. Um, but <laughs> Look at them all shaking their heads. Sam, I'm going to come to you because we've been actually a little bit quiet so far tonight. Because um, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Very much. Very much. So, what I'm going to ask uh, Sam is I would like you to tell a story about Pete on tour. <laughs> he's, he's an absolutely amazing, amazing roomie. You know, always left a, a chocolate on the pillow, you know, for you coming back. I wasn't chocolate. And, uh, you know, always, n never never left anything on the doorknob, you know, to, to tell people not to enter the room. <laughs> um, and, you know, he, he, was so, he was so clean that he never used, ever, ever, ever used all the hot water in the shower. Did he ever have a shower? <laughs> Live in a shower. Yeah. Have you ever yeah, had a bath? Exactly. Never, never, never you used it. The bath? Never ever used all the hot water. Ever. <laughs> Pete, uh, your right Pete to reply is now. No, hold on. There's too many, Julian. All right. Um. Um. The, no. No. Me and Sam. We. It was our first ever tour together in Poland. Uh. Yeah. We. Um. Uh, I, I first met him downstairs as a, a Scotsman living in Malta. That was still Scottish which you know it's just that's the way he was but he can't drink like a Scot can't drink like a Scot until he goes to bed early and everything yeah yeah those days are changing oh are they what that's, you that, going to do turn Maltese yeah that's what that's what Covid's done for me mate I became like a night owl now I can stay up until stupid o'clock <laughs> uh, I, I get the feeling gentlemen that somebody is not quite telling the truth here and I'll tell you why I think that is is because between all three of you, you're so shit scared of what the <laughs> others can say about you that nobody's prepared to stick their head above the parapet and say, he did this. Now, Julian, you did that a few weeks ago. You stuck your head above and you named names. I, I told a fairly tame story there. Um, and I've dropped Pete in it on tour once. Definitely. I could drop myself in it, but and own it up that this was me that dropped him in it. It wasn't me that did it. Though. Now, Pete has got a reputation on tour for being a joker. So I had a, a friend of mine who was also coming on tour, a referee tour with us. So I thought, right, I'm sticking him in Pete's room. Now, our colleague turned up early. He's a single young Frenchman. I put him in Pete's room. 
our French uh, referee friend was sending me photographs about some with some young ladies he'd met who he knew in oh, Thailand yeah. that day. Pete gets into his room, sharing a room with him, opens the door up. There were four used condoms on the floor, a naked Frenchman and a naked Norwegian blonde lying oh, in the yeah. bed. <laughs> Pete then comes and knocks on my door door's room and said, who the bloody hell have you put me in a room with? And I was just giggling to myself going, ha, competition. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Pete, do you have a reputation for being a bit of a ladies man on tour then? No, 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 no. I, no, I haven't done anything like that at all. Practical uh, joker. Yeah, practical joker. More, more than right. I so, so, uh, Paul Manny, right? Because that's who it was. So I arrived back the first Maybe. night, met his um, naked ass, laying in a bed with this blonde piece, and I just said, ah, oh, I need to get my phone charger if you two were having a bit of fun. Anyway, that, I thought that was it. And I just said to the girl, which room are you in? Right? And so she told me a room number. I went down to her room, banged on the door, and this very beautiful Swedish blonde lady answered the door, and I said, um, your friend is in my room. Can I stay in her bed? And uh, she said, well, she's sleeping with me. And I was like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> so <laughs> we ended up top and tailing. In, uh, in 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 this uh, very Swedish um, thingy, and but she was married, so that's why we we're top and tailing. But she gave me a, a, a good night's sleep, and, uh, <laughs> and it's, uh, it was a very good night. And uh, yeah, so that was that one. The next night, I went back and I found a sock attached to the doorknob. All right, and I thought to myself, "Oh my god!" I said, "I am fully. I need to get a shower. I've got no clothes to go out in. Nothing. I have to go in. I walk in." There's nothing. All the everything is completely pristine. There's no bed. There's no nothing. I thought, right, well, I might as well go for a shower. Open the door. There's this blonde Swedish girl and Manny in the bath, completely naked, asleep. All right. And and I just thought, oh, okay. So I just went, thank you very much, shut the door, got all the stuff that I needed. And where did I stay that night? You came banging on my door, I remember, right? Again, saying you couldn't get again. in the bathroom saying you needed a poo. <laughs> yeah, oh, well, come on. <laughs> come on. We all got to unload before we go out. But no, um, yeah, so the uh, yeah, so that's basically what the thing is. So the the sock on the door thing it was all because of uh Poland. I, we got <laughs> Mike absolutely we got Mike absolutely completely hammered. Yeah, with, last time he was in uh, That straw game and he fell asleep. Yeah. Like within half an hour of like playing playing the game with a straw, and I yeah. was like, "Come on, Mike, I've got photographic evidence of that as well." So oh, do you know what? We that, need the photographic was... evidence. So I know we haven't gone straight back onto Poland, but I, I'm intrigued by the straw game now. Oh, uh, <laughs> basically, it's just like dropping a coin in somebody's uh, oh, pint yeah. pot, making like, like the golf ball game. Yeah. It's been like that. We didn't have it. So we, we, we were improvising um, using a straw. And this bloody straw <laughs> so you didn't God save really. the queen with a but, straw? Well, you couldn't do it in Swedish. Um, so, yeah. So, yeah. It was, it was pretty much God save the queen. Fine. So, uh, Poland then. Uh, and we do want photographs of Mike with the straw. Oh, hold on. I've got to go for them all now. I didn't touch him this time. I did not touch him this time. It's not my fault. So, no, no, Mike's got a great pride of being uh, the first one up on tour, really. first one down for breakfast. <laughs> Do you know what? The first day I got to, uh, to Dubai when Sam were out and I were out in 2018, I was, I was there early and my room wasn't ready. So me and a couple of South African lads, we hooked up, we went out, uh, walked around Dubai for a bit, had a few beers, uh, come back later in the evening. <clears throat> it was about, oh, it must have been about quarter to eight, eight o'clock at night. Dubai time, and I walked into my room with my bags now, uh, and my roommate is is, um, is already in bed. It's like, mate, what are you doing? We're in bed. You do like, realize it's like two o'clock, three o'clock in the afternoon, our time, and you're going to bed. Yeah, I'm tired. It's been a long day. I'm like, oh, okay. Thought I'm not going to try and go to bed about ten. So I hit the bar. I came up to the room about two a.m. Uh, Obviously, fast asleep. I've sneaked into bed. My alarm's gone off at 6.30. I've got up, had a shower, had a shave, had a shit and left it part of it in the bowl, as you've got to do. Um, went down for breakfast, come back up, and the fucker is still asleep. 
flat out, absolutely flat out. A bit like Sam, but at least he, this one wasn't naked. I've, uh, I've found a photograph you guys might recognise. Oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> this is a hotel in uh, Warsaw. And you can see the evidence of what was going on. Yeah. <laughs> we actually took that photo the year after when Pete wasn't there and we set it up just for him and we put it on the wall yeah. and then sent him a photograph on the letter. So that one's actually changed. <laughs> Look, it could just, it could just sell it was the same pair. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. I've got to say, they both look a little bit crusty, though. Well, the Julian, the Julian <laughs> socks. Let's have a look at the yeah. curtain. I'll put it that way. <laughs> so now we all know that Sam is a lightweight on tour, and let's face it, he is. Um, uh, <sighs> Pete. <laughs> oh, well, bugger off. Hold on a second, right? I was not a freaking lightweight when it came to freaking... Going to your bit, doing the warm-up Simmons, were we? While she were playing in the band at Oktoberfest, this time last year. Ah, ah right. Okay. <laughs> you want to go there. You really want to go there. And, we um, should, yeah. We should. Yeah, we, we should. should. Yeah. We, we should. And to be fair, um, Sam did pay his chair of this. But did, Sam, yeah. Sam, tell them what happened while I was playing in the band, because I couldn't find my wallet, and I said... I'll just get Shuffle. around in and I'll pay you later. So, dumb, what happened afterwards, Sam? Dumb schmuck here, Mike, right? So he goes up to the bar before he's getting all his get up and all that because he's playing in the band for the Oktoberfest, giving all his trumpet nonsense. And uh, he goes up to the bar and says, can I have a pint, please? And the woman, he's looking for his wallet and the, the, woman, say, the woman says, oh, it's 4.50 or whatever. And uh, he says, listen, he says, my, car's in, my, my wallet's in my car. He says, I'll, I'll pay you after. So, of course, we were all standing there, and I'm going, ding, 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 ding. <laughs> Just put it on the tab. Right, okay. So he buggers off to set up and play and all the rest of it. We were doing drinks on this tab for the whole night. We ended up, uh, what was it, 60-odd quid or something? 65 pounds. 65 pounds. So every time when they asked me know, to settle up at the end of the night. Yeah. Every time, every time we got a round in, right, we were going, cheers, Mike, and he was celebrating with us whilst he was playing. Well, to be honest, 65 pounds doesn't sound like a lot. I mean, how no, much did is, uh, one of our... Fellow rest in um, Vegas be in one to be night. Fair, it was it was only like a two hour session. And there was three of us. So. <laughs> well, we had um, one of our refs in Vegas. Um, I think. He oh, we lost, are, we, are we? Are we? Not, are we not, is he still? A, yeah, still we don't, we, This is one we won't name names of, but we can say what happened. Is, it, is he still married? No, he's getting divorced. <gasps> All oh, right, okay. So we, can, we, <laughs> so we can. So we can name him left, right, and centre. No, right, we don't so, do that. So, I'll, I'll, mate, anyway. I'll make Dave. <laughs> Dave? <laughs> Dave? We call him Dave, Dave the, today, yeah. Dave, Dave the ref. Um, so, we were in Vegas and we, we said, oh, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? Gonna do? And we wanted to watch the... Um, uh, the McGregor-Diaz fight. Mag yeah, McGregor-Diaz fight and Holly Holmes versus whatever it was. And they were both yeah. favourites and they both lost. But we didn't know where to watch it and... And David came up with an idea to get a limo to this uh, place that I've never ever heard of in my life, and I just <laughs> thought it was a form. I thought it was a form of chewing gum or something, right? And it was we went to Spearmint Rhino, okay. <laughs> I, I never heard of it in my life. So we, uh, we, same we went, dodgy. Same dodgy. Yeah, so we got this. We got this stretch limo. We went around through Vegas, right? Uh, and we got there, and we had to pay forty dollars each to get in. We walked in and, and our eyes were adjusting properly and we got in and it was like, oh my God. And it was dark and there was this massive great screen in front of us and it was the uh, Holly Holmes fight was on and all these guys were just sat around and all this lot and our eyes just started adjusting and all of a sudden we just saw her like, there's a naked woman there. Julian, where have you bought me? I haven't bought you anywhere. It's David. David, where have you bought you? It was Mike. Mike, it wasn't Mike. Right, it was you. Anyway, so we were sat in there Julian said, I'll get the first round. So I was with my missus at the time. We were there. And so she she said to Julian, oh, can you go and get a... I'll have a Cosmopolitan. Well, Budweiser was like $2 a beer or something, right? Yep. And the Cosmopolitan was $40 a beer. <laughs> and well, it, she, she came back and drink it. <laughs> yeah, she said, she says, you're having Bud from now on. Anyway, <laughs> anyway so, uh, so, so yeah, so we were all in there. No problem at all. Anyway, next thing, this just girl just comes out of the blue, completely naked, grabs David, 
And I, I takes him straight down the corridor. And we thought, well, five more minutes. We'll watch the Conor McGregor fight. You know, it happened really fast. It was over and done with. David came back, ear to ear, smile, right? And everything else like that. I said, La-, and I said, what are you doing? I said, well, we need food. We haven't eaten all day. Let's go. He said, I'll, I'll stay here. I'll catch you up. Right? Well, that was the last oh, thing we oh, saw oh, of him. Oh, oh. Right? So that's the last thing. So we went... Him. Yeah, so we we went out the we went out, got a taxi into town. We went to this um, Texas, uh, bar. Yeah. Texas yeah. bar, and it was every every person got a ride on a um, oh god, what do you call it, Julian? You went on it, oh, with Mike. One of those, uh, mechanical it was toys. prostitute. Yeah, no, 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 not that type <laughs> of ticket. Not that type of ticket. Free ride on the bull with the, with dinner. Yeah, and if they lasted so long, they got a free beer, but you know it didn't happen. But we we, we had nice dinner. We went, then we went into Vegas and all this stuff. Anyway, next day. I come out of the room, Julian comes over to me and he says, Pete, do not say anything to Dave. Do not say anything to Dave. And I was like, oh, what's he done? He says, it's cost him a lot of money. And I said, all right. Anyway, I said, oh, I said, oh Dave, how's your night? And he just looked white as a sheet, everything. And he was like, oh, my God. And I said, oh, I said um, Julian whispered to me what he'd done. He didn't just spend one thousand pound in the place. He didn't spend two thousand pound in the place. No. He he got a phone call at six o'clock in the morning from his wife, who is a uh, uh, maybe a policeman, a uh, police lady. Uh, for a, a why have Amer- why have American Express contacted me about maxing out my credit card? Uh, <laughs> he used his wife's credit card in Spearmint Rhino. Okay. I don't know how much debt it was, but he maxed it out. He maxed his own bank account out. He's, he nearly, he went into his business bank account as well. <laughs> All right. And it was the best part of probably about three, three, four thousand pounds, maybe. I can't really remember the details. Three and a half thousand dollars. Three and a half thousand dollars it was, right? He did that in one night. Didn't even get, any, you know, didn't even get his trousers down. Didn't even get anything. You know, like, he, that's what he spent. All right. Um... And then, uh, so the whole day we went to the, <laughs> we went to the uh, the Vegas Sevens. We were ready to to rock and roll. We were there, and yeah, uh, he gets a phone call morning. from his wife. Yeah, the, oh god, my god, that was vile. Um, so he was there, and I got him a beer because I felt sorry for him. I ribbed him a bit, and I just said to him, I said, if it was me spending three thousand five hundred quid on what you've done, would you rib? ripped the shit out of me and went yes I said well free reign and I just ripped him so much all day <laughs> but I was I, I had a I had a problem with work so I had to ring work from from there and he was phoning his missus saying oh, um, it's it's law that uh, they're not allowed to show me their in in Vegas and that was it I just spat my beer out all the way all over him because I couldn't believe what he said to his wife and then his wife said to him, are you coming back tomorrow? Because it's the twins' birthday. And he went, oh, I'm not coming back till Tuesday. <laughs> that was it. Well, I went dead. <laughs> he got out. Of, he, he, didn't, he didn't have a good time, did he, Julian? I think he might have done <laughs> until he got the bill. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, what what I happened at the airport? I home from the airport. And I've never driven away from a house as fast in my life. What, what happened at the airport? Um, didn't you meet one of the, the girls? Possibly. Uh, yeah. I think you're all in a queue and you're going, oh, that's a bird, because they fly in from Vegas and obviously do what they do in the weekend and then fly back out again. And uh, I, th- I think one of the girls is in the, the next line next to him. But uh, yeah, it was a very interesting, very interesting Vegas trip. <laughs> uh, well, the, on that uh, bombshell, we're definitely going to take another break now, but we'll be back in a couple of minutes. Uh, so here we are trialing the Axi Wii Sport 250 open ear headset. Uh, it's really useful because they don't actually go in your ear, they just rest on the outside. So you can still hear your surroundings. So if you're out on the jog, you can hear any cars coming past if you're out on the canal. You can hear any cyclists. It's really useful if you're with people. You know, if you want to listen to music, listen back to what you've recorded, you can still listen to other people's input while you've got what's happening in play. They're really comfortable, you know, they're really sturdy, really different design, they don't move while you're running, they don't bounce up and down like other wireless headsets do. Uh, so yeah, they're really good for putting that stuff. Uh, welcome back to our Oktoberfest version of the 22 Dropouts. 
uh, and the bear is about the only thing that's still dressed in Oktoberfest stuff because we're all too hot. Uh, but we are still drinking plenty of beer, which means it's always a good night. And it's made even more special, I think, tonight by having Pete on because uh, Pete, a bit like me, has got no filter whatsoever and he doesn't mind uh, opening his mouth and dropping everybody in it. Um, particularly those, a bit like you, Julian, I have noticed a pattern here. You are very, very reluctant, both of you, to drop the guys that are on the show in the shit, just in case something comes back. And Julian started this trend uh, a couple of weeks ago of being quite happy to drop somebody in the shit who isn't here. So carry on, gents. Uh, now, Pete, um, you said something a little while ago. Now, we all know that Sam made the big faux pas in Vegas, and he took his missus. Now, did I hear you right that you taken yours with you as well on that uh, on that particular trip? Oh yeah, oh yeah. I I, I took I took Vic yeah. I, I took Vic, Vic to Vegas because she uh, always wanted to go. Okay, so I can see you looking over to the right there just to make sure that you're not incriminating yourself because she's probably in the room with you. Uh, oh, no, no, we're, we're slow for January. We're slow for January. Just go for it. Oh, <laughs> tell us about boots, that, Pete. You, did, you <laughs> can tell our stories about that then. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, sorry, I, anyway um, I do have a question about you taking Vic to Vegas, which is, uh, I, I suppose that's the story of every porn film, isn't it? Uh, taking Vic in Vegas. What did she do while you went to Spearmint Rhinos? Or, or did well, you take her there? I know, she, she was the worst <laughs> one. She was she really trying she, to get her a stripper, a stripper. Yeah, no, because she, she, yeah, because she was all up for it. And, and she said, because she's got quite a good rag, right? Um, I just said, and she said, they're not tits. These are tits, right? And she's just like... <laughs> So uh, and that was it. And then, and, then, and then we were like, well, should we get you a dance? She, yeah, I'm up for a dance. And I was like, who are you? You're not the person I want to be with. <laughs> and I was like, no, just, let's get out of here. And then Dave came back, right, we're going for food. And Vic's led by food. So uh, we, we went for food. So, uh, yeah, that, that, that saved me some money. We were all going to chip in, weren't we, with Julian? We were. We were, getting, we were looking forward to actually getting her a dance at one of the tables. Yeah. And uh, was, having a bit of a giggle at it. Well, she could have worked off a bit of Dave's um, bill if she'd have got up and danced and got, <laughs> got, got some extra cash for him. Probably got a refund. Yeah, uh, well, I mean, mate, why didn't you do that? It's a cheap holiday. <laughs> Especially if you were getting rid of her in 18 months. <laughs> oh, that was I the way wrong. Hasn't got <laughs> <laughs> I should delete me my friends off Facebook, so we're all right. You know. That's all right. And so she won't get to see this then when you post the link on your Facebook page. She won't watch this. Oh, good. <laughs> In that case, keep going. Uh, Sam, you have been very, very quiet tonight, which is very unlike you. So it's definitely time to either, Sam, you have to dig into these stories, or boys, you guys are digging into Sam. I think it's better they dig into me, because uh, I don't really want to fucking land myself in the bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I I have been guilty of uh, taking taking. I took my girlfriend at the time um, to Vegas, so yeah, did that because um, it was a holiday as well as a as a trip. Um, I stayed on. Uh, and yeah, shouldn't shouldn't have probably shouldn't have done that really, but you know, um, you know what happens. You know, life gets in the way, and yeah, you know, that sort of stuff happens. But I didn't go to bed early when I was in Vegas. Stayed up, and enjoyed the sights, and you know, some trips and stuff. Yeah, no, I've got, I've got nothing on these boys, honestly. You know, they, they, you know, they're they're both good boys. <laughs> oh, wait, 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 wait. So, so on on Vegas, my missus came to Vegas. I took her to the rugby. She just wanted to sunbathe. She hates rugby. Didn't have a clue about it. She uh, the next day, I said, "Are you coming on the bus?" She went, "Fuck that! I'm going shopping." Right. Yeah. So, yeah. Right. <laughs> Sounds like my uh, wife. And, that does. Uh, so she went shopping. She had a great time. She you know, came back and she had. You know, Victoria's Secret stuff all over the bed, you know, all sorts of stuff. It was you know, bang on, right? And then, uh, um, so you got some enjoyment uh, out of that, the, then. Um, <laughs> yeah. All right. So we went on the lash, we went on the lash, and I finished, I think I finished drinking it half past six in the morning to get the bus with Julian at seven o'clock. I remember that fully kitted out. I haven't been asleep, uh, I've been asleep. 
and we got sent to the game and we we had to go to pitch some uh, pitch four or something and we had to do the semi final of the under 18s <laughs> right? USA collegiate uh, <laughs> USA collegiate uh, whatever yeah. it was right now honestly well, Pete, I, that was the best game we ref- best two games we refereed all weekend all in weekend. your opinion yeah, wait, 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 right, okay, so I said to Julian, I said, it can't be that bad, two under-18 teams, you know, like, like this. so I did no warm-up, I was absolutely hammered, right, I went on the pitch, and I did, and the ball never went out, it never went out, I was, I did, oh my god, I was trying to find a knock-on, I was just trying to find anything to blow the half-time, I was absolutely goose, it was nine minutes, and I was like, and Julian was running touch, and now I looked over to Julian to see if he was running in touch for me, and he was there, just sat down on the on the bench side. I finished my game. I finished my game absolutely cream crackered, right? Alcohol pouring out of me and so far. Julian went. Julian came on the pitch like 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 he does like, like and he went. That was a bit fast. And he went on oh, his game was even his game was even faster, and I was laughing my cock off on the side on the side, like, and I was not running in touch for him. I flagged up when I was sat down, right red, alcohol pouring out of me. And it was what thirty yeah. degrees out there. It was brutal. Thirty well. degrees at eight yeah. o'clock in the morning, and then it, we finished our games, and we got a golf cart picked us up, yeah. didn't he? And we had to go to a golf cart and took us over to the other pitches, and we were back on doing another game. For ages, and then we didn't get more games till about four o'clock. They killed yeah. us. Yeah. Was that was that the tour when they gave me games on the second day? They made me rest from fifty because they had some fifteen aside games there at the Vegas tournament in the social area. Yeah, and yeah. I had to do, yeah, yeah. I did four fifteen aside games in one day. And when I got back to the referee area after doing four games, I said, "Right, I need a beer now. Where's the bar?" And I have um, uh, Fabi, who's in charge of the referees, and said, "No, they just shut the bar." And I've never sweared at somebody that brutally in my life. I was like, you've got to be fucking kidding me. Are you serious? They've shut the bar. Not one, but everybody's sitting there with just finishing their beers off. Not one for me. Of last, first one on the pitch, last one off it. Nobody's got me a pint. I was fuming. So we had um, one of our Austrian referees with us, who had a car with him, threw me in the back of the car, drove me back to the hotel. I literally walked in, put my boots on the bar and ordered myself a pint. <laughs> yeah, and that, that, that guy... Um, that Australian guy, oh. he invited us to Oktoberfest, but he opened his boot and he had that much stash in his boot, didn't he? Yeah. He, he, had, he had tops from all over the world in his boot. Oh, oh you know, should we yeah. do this? You know, oh, you know, well, and he wanted to do swapsies of tops. And I was like, well, where have you got the stash from? He said, oh, it travels all over the world with me, all the stash. I look after it. I look <laughs> after it. What was his name? I do believe that was the year I ended up in hospital as well. Was it an Australian? Oh, yeah, you got, you got an Australian guy. No, no, um, and it was an Austrian or something. It was an Austrian guy and an Australian guy. I was going to say, it's a long way to go for Oktoberfest. <laughs> yeah. The, um, so so we, were, we had about two or three days, didn't we, afterwards in, in yeah. Vegas. And uh, Julian became poorly. <laughs> and, he, uh, and he said, right, I need to go to the hospital. And we're like, no, 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 no. No, and, you both uh, made me go. Not, not here. Don't go to the hospital in America. No, no. no. no they, they, made, they made me go. I wasn't well, we did, it, it, it was it, it was. It was poorly. We did the zip line. You were poorly. Yeah. Oh, was that afterwards? That was afterwards. It was after, it was after it, that. It come back here. What did he get? Pneumonia or something? Uh, bronchitis. Bronchitis. You got bronchitis in America. It cost him... How much did it cost you? You got loads. It, it didn't cost me anything. My insurance company paid for it, but I think it was 27 grand. Jesus. How much? Uh, well, say it again, Julian. Okay, we'll go yeah, there. Julian's got to put another 50p the, in the, the insurance bill. I think was 27,000. Yeah, 27,000 pounds for bronchitis. Yeah, yeah, it's my kids using all the internet. I think um, the insurance bill came in. I don't know if that was crowns or dollars. Um, either way, it's still a lot. And uh, I had I got in there normally with bronchitis or something like that. They'll do a quick test, check your bacteria, check your lungs out quickly, and you're gone in 10 minutes with either antibiotics or an inhaler or something. And it's pretty quick. It's pretty easy. And you can see an athletic. Great. I got in there, saw one doctor, triage room, saw another doctor, EKG, plugged in there, checking my heart rate out because I said I had a cough. They had checked all my thread, didn't smoke, reasonably athletic, not, not completely unfit, uh, not overweight much. I am now, but not then. <laughs> we all are after lockdown. Okay, we've been drinking a fair bit over the weekend. 
Um, so then they tell me for a chest x-ray. The, the radiologist turns up, puts me in the wheelchair. I'm like, seriously, I can walk. She's like, no, you have to go in the wheelchair. So as she's pushing me around the corner to the, to the radiology department, I ask her, can we make this a bit fun? Can we like go, wee and go really fast around corners? And she starts laughing and can't take me seriously anymore. And then we get into the x-ray room. I piss myself laughing. I said, fuck me, I haven't seen one of them since 1980. And she's like, what? And she had a, a, one of the old fashioned film x-ray machines. They're all digital now in Europe. Yeah. But in America, they're still using the old film ones. So uh, it took forever to get the x-ray sorted. So they got me on this chest x-ray pad, did a chest x-ray, all clear, no problem. Get out, yeah, got bronchitis, da, 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 from the doctor. And then the doctor, as a last thought, asked, oh, by the way, um, you said you don't smoke, right? I went, yeah. And he turns around to me and goes, oh, that's good, because there was a little blip on there, and if you smoked, we thought it might be cancer. Ah. <laughs> I know. I then start freaking out in my head. And then I have this very nice gentleman sit next to me in a tank top with a bow tie. Hello, sir. How are you? <laughs> I'm very well. And he's a customer services guy who wants to see how my treatment at the hospital has gone and do a customer services report. And by the end of it, he said he's never written so much down in his entire life. Because my last thing I said to him was, <laughs> buy your radiologist a decent fucking x-ray machine because that shit you had in there was fucking embarrassing. Uh, when I left the hospital, um, two of the guys had actually waited in reception for me. I was there for three hours, I think. Two of the guys had waited in reception, Mike uh, and Dave. And uh, when I came out, I, I wasn't in the Well done, Pete. Well <laughs> done. I'm with you there, man. <laughs> wasn't Pete. Wasn't Pete. <laughs> it wasn't me. <laughs> Definitely not Pete. It was, my, it was my two roomies, Mike and Dave. Mike and Dave. Okay, that, is, uh, that, that was a great was ending to a story. Well done. Clear, clearly in this, there was no bar bill or stripper's bill uh, no, on, no on bill. your insurance there. Thing so thing you had none of that in, not one of those type of hospitals there. It might have been caused by them, but you never know. <laughs> That's probably going to be one of the worst stories about going on tour I've ever heard, mate. But thanks for it anyway. <laughs> It'll take about 20 seconds on the show. <laughs> Sam. Yeah. Come on, mate. Come on. I need to know yes. your best your best tour and your best tour story. Because you've been far too quiet. Honestly, I'm, I'm, I'm serious, mate. I, I don't have anything on these guys. It's, it's the no, no. Just, it doesn't have to be about these guys. Just the best tour you've been on and the best story from that tour. Well, apart from, genuinely, uh, Poland, Vegas, and, uh, you know, the, the uh, World Series warm-up last year, man, that's the bit, all the tours I've done. And Dubai, um, and Dubai. And Dubai. Uh, you, could, you could drop me in it. Well, we can do anything we like at the moment, because you can't hear us, because you're internet shit. I can't shit. fucking understand a word he's saying. He's turned into that <laughs> Swedish chef from uh, The Muppet yeah. Show. I was going to say, uh, Sam, do you, were you there when I tried to flag down a cab? I was a bit drunk. It wasn't a taxi. Possibly. <laughs> what was it? Oh, it, is? it might have been a police car. Yeah. <laughs> I think it was. <laughs> Luckily, he didn't stop. He might have oh. given you a lift to where you wanted to go, mind. I, I, That's I, what I was hoping for. Let, let, let's go with this one then. Um, but it's not really, the story doesn't come from me though. It comes from uh, Julian, because Julian can tell a story way better than me about, I think it's, uh, well, did you not get stuck somewhere, Pete, for a night? <laughs> <laughs> he's done it, hasn't he? He saved it right till now, and he's just dropped that bomb. <laughs> yes! <laughs> Oh, you have to tell it now, Pete. <laughs> no, we did invite Pete on to tonight's show so he could have a right to reply against Julian uh, for dropping him in it. Um, now, I think <laughs> clearly Sam's just gone a few better. Um, I, I right, who wants I to explain? So. I, I actually can't tell you the story because I, I really don't know. Oh, I can't. I can't. Can. I was. I, I can't. I was there. <laughs> <laughs> I told you this two years after it actually happened, Julian. I kept it quiet. No, you I didn't. kept it quiet for two. Yeah, dude. You told me the yes, no, You told me the morning after. No, I was too embarrassed to tell anybody what had happened. So, so I so refereeing in Poland probably two thousand fifteen, maybe. Anyway, this girl latched on to me and she said, "Do you want to come back to mine?" 
And I was like, fuck it, free taxi, why not? Let's go. She was looked all right after about 15 pints, no problem at all. We went back. She's on, the paint, on the paint scale then. And we had to go through some uh, automatic gates and we went up some stairs, up some stairs, and then basically into her flat. And I'd, I was all dressed in rugby gear and all this stuff. And I, and I sort of like sobered up quickly. And she got herself undressed and I just looked and uh, just thought my dinner was going to come back up. <laughs> and, I, and I said to her, I needed to go in the shower. And I said, if you just get into bed and all this lot, well, you get in the shower. Uh, I'll go in the shower. So I went in the shower. About five minutes later, she, she banged on the door saying, uh, uh, how long are you going to be, Mr. Pete? And I was like, uh, I said, oh, just give me a bit longer. Get into bed, get yourself settled and stuff like that. Well, I spent ages in the shower. Absolutely ages. I used all the water. I used everything, right? I told you you used all the hot water. Shut up, you. <laughs> right? And I just opened the door just slightly, and there she was, passed out in bed. Well, I got all my stuff back on. I went down the stairs, and I turned left. I should have turned right. I turned left, and this automatic door locked me in this courtyard. And every door was automatic, 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 automatic. I had nowhere to go. I was in there for ages. I, had, I couldn't phone anybody. I couldn't do anything. I was like, oh, my God, what am I going to do? Anyway, there was this really, really high-class restaurant that backed onto it. And I managed to undo the door, uh, the window through the, the bolts and then shout through. But it was the ladies' toilet. So I was shouting through into the ladies' <laughs> toilet in, in English, and they were obviously Polish. Well, the first one looked at me and ran. The second one got me, got the manager. The manager, I said, look, I said, uh, uh, no, no speak Polish. Uh, can you help me? And he was like, yeah, sure. So I had to go through this top-class restaurant, wear my rucksack, full refereeing gear, and I walked all the way through, and I ended up the other side of this courtyard, and I, was, I felt free. I felt like I'd just come out of prison. I felt free as a bird. And I ended up getting a taxi and going for a kebab. And I was happy. <laughs> <laughs> I felt free. Oh, I thought I got away with it. That's a classic so, story. About two, three years later, I was dreading meeting her again. And I couldn't remember what she even looked like. So I was like, oh, my God. You don't, I was just going to, uh, going to ask, so when she was looking pretty uh, after the beer goggles... Did you take any photos on your phone that you can share? No, I know. <laughs> I, I, I don't I don't think I could even work my phone at the time. <laughs> no, what uh... we should do now is get Julian to um, share his screen again with different photo fits of fat birds in Poland. I've, actually, I've got one lined up as well. Yeah, that Sam sent me on the way back from uh, Poland last year, I think. What? Sam did what in Poland? <laughs> Sam was on his way back from Poland last year. Oh, was your Sam was... Sam probably was sent me that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, all the talent. Oh, Julian, I've got He's so... Posted, I think. Yeah, it's all the talent, isn't it? Were you there when that, um, oh, that, that lass was there, that young lass? I can't remember what she's called. Oh, God. I'd have to think. And all she was doing was wearing all them lycra shorts and she was going around and stuff. Can you remember her, Julian? No. no I think he might have remembered that. <laughs> I'll send you the pictures. <laughs> I've probably already got them. Yeah. I think you said that. Our, our WhatsApp group was brutal. If I remember rightly, our WhatsApp group <clears throat> was brutal. Oh, um, Julian also um, lined up this uh, Dominica. Dominica. Yeah. Dom yeah. Dominica. Did Referee. she get hurt? Didn't she? You no, know, she played and got hurt. Yeah, she played yeah, that's right, yeah. in the first game and broke her leg. That's right, yeah. Yeah. And Julian oh, still to made it to do appointment. Kangaroo Court. Great word, right? <laughs> yeah, of course. We did Why it. not? <laughs> we did it in the woods. We did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. <laughs> what was Kangaroo <laughs> Court in the woods for? I... Why wasn't it in the bar? Um, that was to... Didn't we make one of the Swiss referees vomit that year? Oh, sorry. Was it vomit? Yeah. Can you, can you remember uh, Alex One Mark? of the Swiss guys. I do remember Alex, yeah. Yeah, can you remember Alex Marsh where he uh, asked all the kids, he was refereeing the under-18 game and there was a load of stones on the pitch and he just said, pick up a stone 
off the pitch and throw it as far as you can. Throw it. And it, and, and, uh, it was... And he kept quiet about it. And these two boys, like, grasped him up in the kangaroo court about about where he actually, they threw all the stones and they all threw the stones towards all the yeah. spectators. And he just said, throw all the stones all over there. And all the stones just went over there, all the kids. And this, and Alex got absolutely hung drawn and courted in court for asking all these kids to throw a lot of stones at the spectators before a rugby game. And from a refereeing I mean, point of view, yeah. I think that's a jolly good idea. It keeps them a little bit further away from where giving you abuse. Um, and uh, do you know what? We could talk for, for hours and hours, but sadly, we have come to the end of tonight's show. Uh, guys, you are coming back. I'm not just going to invite you back. You are coming back very soon. And um, we might just happen to do a Warsaw referee special and we'll get some more of the guys who've been on tour with you. I think that might make a good episode. That sounds like um, a good body plan. I, I think I know it's going to be a cracking episode. Now, um, we've got no time for the rumour mill. Not <laughs> the, oh, no, not no, that no, we've no. got Pete, any rumours. Pete, 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 you've got to do the other one, mate. He does the eyes. I do that. So he's here, no evil. What are you doing? Yeah. He's seen no evil. And Pete's definitely speak evil. And with that, dear listener and viewer, it's time to say good night. Good night. Take care, guys. See you all soon. Yeah. Good night, See you guys. Yeah. Trouble game for that.